Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Lent in 2021. It feels so good to say 2021 instead of 2020. I'm sort of glad that that other year has been left behind. And we hope that you will have 2020 vision to look forward from now until Easter of 2021. We're on our Lenten journey. This is the first Sunday of Lent. and We thank you for being with us for virtual worship. The Gospel lesson for the first Sunday in Lent is Mark 1, 9 through 15. In this brief passage, we hear about the baptism of Jesus, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, and the beginning of the ministry in Galilee. Listen for God's word for you. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Our Lenten journey begins on Ash Wednesday. Many of you likely celebrated the Ash Wednesday virtual service that we offered here from First Presbyterian Church, 1793 in Washington, Pennsylvania. And if you did that, um, or if you missed that, we're now into the season of Lent. And between now and Easter Sunday, there's a real opportunity for us to re-examine our faith, uh, reignite our passion in the God who loves us and journeys with us faithfully every step of the way. And today's gospel reading from Mark's gospel is a wonderful passage, a great scripture where Mark wastes no time in getting through lots of material and events in the life of Jesus. In today's passage, you've heard about the baptism of Jesus. You've heard about the way in which Jesus was tempted in the wilderness to and you've heard about Jesus preaching his inaugural sermon as he began the Galilean ministry, three. So it's the trifecta, three, three things that happen here, any of which, by the way, would be enough for a sermon. Um, and we could talk a lot about the baptism of Jesus, how it differs from our own bapti baptism. We could talk about uh, the wilderness experience where he's tempted. Um, and we could go into great detail because the other Gospels, uh, two of the other synoptic Gospels, Matthew and Luke, tell more details about that. And we could talk about uh, this beginning of his ministry. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the Mark method because that's where we are. And we're going to touch on these three lightly and see it, the way in which all three fit nicely together as we begin our journey through Lent. First of all, you have this baptism, and it is John the Baptist that does the baptizing. Jesus is there. Um, he comes up out of the water because this is not uh, an Episcopal sprinkling or a Presbyterian little bit of water on the head or some pouring of water on the head. This is an immersion. Jesus goes all the way under. Uh, greetings to those of you with uh, Baptist and disciple of, of Christ, uh, uh, roots who went all the way under. Jesus comes up out of the water and he sees the heavens parting and a dove and a voice. And in this, in this passage, uh, unlike in the transfiguration where other disciples got to hear these, these uh, angelic, this voice of God and Jesus being beloved, in this passage we don't hear, we notice, excuse me, we notice that Jesus is the only one who seems to see and hear these things, in which case 
we hear in this passage, the voice of God saying this, you are my son, beloved, and with you I am well pleased. You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. God's stamp of approval. Now that seems like a great day. This could be like, uh, I don't know, winning the Super Bowl or the World Series and yay, this is great. I'm high mountaintop experience. God, my father, the one I call Abba, Daddy, is well pleased with me. So let's have a picnic. Let's celebrate. No contraire. That doesn't happen. Because it says, not a while later, the Spirit immediately, the Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. Now, this isn't like Jesus is sitting around and thinking, now, where might I go next? What shall I do now to celebrate this baptism, this inaugural event in my life? Where do I go? What do I do? Uh -uh. The Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And he was out in that wilderness for 40 days. Hmm, any coincidence that the season of Lent is 40 days, not counting Sundays? Uh, any notion that maybe it rained in the Old Testament for 40 days and 40 nights? Any connection between the children of Israel being in their wilderness experience for 40 years? 40 is a big number in the Bible for Jesus to be out there in probably a desert area for 40 days was a real time of trial and testing and temptation. It even says he was out there with wild beasts, wild beasts in the wilderness. What a challenging time. And that he was not alone because the angels waited on him. There were divine messengers who cared for him during that time. I was reminded this week of, uh, of an old gospel hymn. Uh, Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk by himself. Jesus had to walk that valley by himself. Now the Spirit was with him, but from an insider's point of view, you're, you're on your own. And for each of us, the Lenten journey is corporate. We're connected with each other as we do this Lenten journey, but we're, we're doing it ourselves. It's a connection between us and the God who loves us. And even though we might notice it, we might not notice it, Angels are there, the messengers are there, the Spirit of God that drives us into these challenging times is there with us, comforting us, guiding us, giving us wisdom and counsel and strength for the journey. I don't know that there's ever been a time in my lifetime when things have been more challenging, where we've needed that kind of help when sometimes we feel like we're all alone on this journey. People have been so isolated during the the COVID pandemic that they're just hungry for socialization, for socializing, for meeting and being with people. But as recently as today, I was with someone who, who said, I'm still wearing my mask. I'm still staying at home. I'd really love to get out and see people, but I haven't had a COVID shot yet. I want to be safe, not just for myself, but for others. It's been a lonely, challenging time. And God is with us. And how is it that God is with us? This Lenten time, the time between now and Easter, is a great time for us to reconnect with God, to re-examine our faith, to think about what we need to do to get back on track. You could spend a whole uh, sermon on temptations. Uh, some years, that, well, what's what we do right now? We talk about the temptations during Lent. What is it that you're going to give up for Lent? What is it that's tempting you? Is it chocolate? Is it ice cream? Is it brownies? Is it calories that come in sweet forms? Maybe some adult beverages that make you feel better. Now, please, don't think about chocolate brownies. Don't think about desserts. Don't think about going or doing something that you think you shouldn't do. Don't think about that. Isn't it true that just at the moment when you try not to think about something, it's still there? Because the temptations are. The temptations are there. And God is with us. And 
the Lord's Prayer, we say, lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil, because the temptations will come. Here was Jesus in the wilderness in this time of testing. No gap between his baptism and being driven into the wilderness. And then he comes out of the wilderness. No, no time to wait here too. Immediately, immediately, he strikes out on his journey. We find out not all the details about what happened to the John, John the Baptist and his losing his life, losing his head, all that goes along with that. What we hear about is, and after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news, the good news of God, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is near, or at hand is another translation. Kingdom of God is near and at hand, um, and this is a very important distinction. The time for this has come, but in the original language, in the Greek, this is not chronos, that is time measured by our watches and calendars. This isn't that kind of, of linear time that we measure. It's kairos, which is a moment that's filled with possibility. The kairos moment, the time when, when the deck is stacked for good things to happen, for great possibilities to take place, not only for us individually, but for, but for groups and families and organizations and cultures and nations and the world. You see, it's a, it's a Kairos moment when we tune into the way in which that God is there with us. Kairos is not so much about time, but about power. The power of God is at hand and accessible for us. We are not alone. And sometimes in the darkest and most challenging of moments, when we think things couldn't get any worse, those are sometimes the moments when we discover the power and possibility of God that allow us to hope again, to dare to hope again, to dream again, to work again, to passionately work things toward a better future for us and others and the whole world. I could get excited about that. You see, I think the worst thing that people can give up for Lent, and people give up all sorts of things, I have known of people that decided to give up housework, or washing dishes, or cooking for Lent. Huh? How would that be? That was a kind of a different way of giving up something. But I think the worst thing that can happen during Lent is just giving up. Giving up. And haven't there been times during this whole corona thing when you get so worn down, the cumulative fatigue of all of the things swirling around us from so many different directions causes a perfect storm that leads to despair, that leads to maybe just wanting to quit, to give up. This is why the present is filled with possibility, power and possibility that come through God who provides a kairos moment, a moment when anything is possible, when we don't have to give up, when the energy that God gives us through the Spirit. By the way, back in that baptism, when it said the Spirit came onto Jesus, a more accurate translation is the Spirit came into Jesus. And that same Spirit that came into Jesus in his baptism can come in into us at any moment to give us strength, power, and possibility, and hope. And that's what I want you to discover during this season of Lent in 2021. We desperately need hope. Now, if you feel better feeling badly about things because Jesus says, time is fulfilled, kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news, then please repent. If you want forgiveness, it's there. Because this whole story is colored with the good news, the mercy, an unconditional love of God. And that gets rid of anything that we might feel badly about. And this notion of repentance comes from a word in Greek that leads to things like metanoia, which is transformation. It's like returning our focus on God and sometimes going 180 degrees in another direction in order to discover hope for ourselves and for the whole world. So here we are in Lent. Hope you have a good Lent. Purple's the color for Lent. There are butterflies in the purple. 
that remind us that Easter is on the way and there is resurrection hope for all of us, even now. Have a Kairos moment now and now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Forty days and forty nights You were fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet undefiled Shall not we your sorrow share and from worldly joys abstain, fasting with unceasing prayer, strong with you to suffer pain. Then if Satan on us press, flesh or spirit to us, Shall we have peace divine? All your gladness ours shall be. Round us too shall angels shine, such as served you faithfully. Keep, O oh, keep us, Savior dear, Ever constant by your side, that with you we may appear at the eternal Easter tide. Please join with me by opening your mind and your heart to God who connects with us as we connect with each other, even now, in prayer. Today we'll be closing with the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, and we will be using the sins and those who sin against us version of the Lord's Prayer. Shall we pray? Creator God, we thank you for the season of Lent, for opportunities to re-examine our faith, to hear the stories fresh and new between now and a high holy season called Easter, which gives us hope now and always. In the meantime, we ask you to be with us, guiding us with your Holy Spirit on this Lenten journey. We know that Jesus lived this journey and we pray that you will help us to grow to be more like he was. We thank you for his baptism and for our baptism. We thank you for his temptations and for your being with us through our temptations. You know that we pray, lead us not into temptation, but we always add, but deliver us from evil for those temptations will be around us. And we pray that you will be with us as we face those temptations, as Jesus faced temptations. And we thank you for the way that you offer us opportunities to repent according to your divine mercy, which accepts us always, no matter what we've done that we shouldn't have done, no matter what we should have done that we didn't do. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. Be with us now as we think of people and places who are in need of your attention, for we know that you care about them deeply, even deeper than we ever will. And so, we bring to you the names of people about whom we care, and we bring to you the names of places about which we are concerned. Hear us, gracious God, as silently now we pray for others. Thank you for hearing our prayers for others. 
we confess to you that we need help too, that we don't live this life by ourselves, and that we wish to be partners with you in Kairos moments of opportunity where your Holy Spirit provides power and potential for us and for others. And we ask you to be with us and we pray that you will give us strength for our journey and guidance for our lives. We come to you now to bring hopes and dreams as well as fears and frustrations, knowing that you give us guidance for the living of our lives. Hear us, loving God, as silently now we pray for ourselves Thank you for hearing our prayers. As we've prayed for others and for ourselves, we pray now those familiar words that Jesus taught disciples, that most perfect of all prayers, when he taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I charge you as you strengthen your faith during the season of Lent to give up anything that you'd like to give up except giving up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Persistence, patience are yours with guidance by the Holy Spirit. Make a difference with your life. God is calling you to do so. And as you make a difference in helping the world to be a better, brighter place, be at peace. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, both now and forevermore. Amen.